Hello artists, how are you today? Stephanie Oni coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River here in Six Rivers National Forest near Willow Creek, California. Oz and I welcome you to the studio. So glad you're here with us today. In this week's edition of Creating Your First Altered Book, we play with some new techniques. It's new to me. It's probably been around for a while, but I had not really seen it before. And um, this is one that Kat suggested to me actually. This is alcohol inks on aluminum foil. And I had a lot of fun playing with this. So this is all the further we're gonna get on this build this week. Um, next week, we will be putting, dun dun dun, doors. See if I can get it to where it doesn't glare quite so much. Maybe the orange ones will work better. We are putting doors on our little windows. So you'll see I'm using my 30 times three tiles. I am, you know, I decided that I wanted to use these elements in my book or books. Um, and we made the artwork, so let's use them. You know, that's, that's kind of how I see that. So next week, um, we'll find just the right image to put inside of each of these little windows, doors. Are they a window or are they a door? They're gonna be more of a door. Um, but I'm really looking forward to this. Um, and this process was really fun. Um, of course, I did do some other sample work. Now these got a little bit muddy, um, but I will definitely be saving these pieces um, for a later time. Look at all the texture and yumminess in there. And you'll see how I did that. These just um, were crumpled up instead of the, the dots. You leave the aluminum foil flat and you work on the shiny side, the shiny side up. And um, when I did this, I crumpled these first. And, you know, I was just really playing with color, seeing what I could do. You know, it was experiment, experiment, which is what we're supposed to do. Okay, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please be sure to comment um, and like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Please add this video to a playlist. All of those things really do help to support the channel. If you are able to, if you really enjoy the channel, please jump on over to Patreon. We do have two tiers, a $10 tier and a $25 tier. The $25 tier gets you a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one conversation every month with me. And both the $10 and the $25 tier get two additional videos every week. They are full length videos. They are not something that's five minutes. Um, so you'll get your own creating your first altered book and your own exclusive masterclass pretty cool. So if you have the opportunity to help to support the channel, I really would appreciate um, you doing so. Okay, guys, I hope you have a great day. And here's the video. We'll chat soon. Bye. Hello, artists. Welcome to our next project in creating your first altered book. Yes, very exciting. Um, this is uh, the Patreon project for this week in creating your first altered book. I'm sure I will show you that in the intro, um, but let's talk about our new page. Uh, I'm just going to try to prop my book up here just a little bit more. This is a really nice sturdy page. This is probably at least four pages glued together, plus it has you know, the background ephemera and then this page put on top of it. So this is a very nice sturdy page. These two pages I needed to be extra strong. So this is about six pages glued together. And this is about six pages glued together. And this is four pages glued together. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of a build on this. Nothing that's too serious or too tough. So I don't want you to stress about it. We're still going to be, you know, doing fun, easy things. Now, remember, I have prepped every single page in this book. I went through in the very beginning, and you can see that on the Creating Your First Altered Book Part 1. Uh, number one, I went through and showed you how to prep a book, how to pick a book. Um, so I have taken pages out of this book. I uh, started, you know, gluing two pages together. So I wanted to let you know that you do have to still, you know, uh, prep 
the book. Take out the pages that you need to take out, glue together the pages you need to glue together. And in this center, between our two heavy pages, the sixer and the sixer, we are putting in a piece of fabric. And the reason why we're putting this in without really needing it at this point, we just need to make sure that this all stays where we want it to stay. My squeeze bottle is full of Mod Podge and uh, we just put a nice heavy coat of that on here. We're gonna let this dry and uh, we will come back to this later. We're gonna do some fun background technique and um, this will probably take a couple videos. So it's gonna be cool. It's a cat, Austin, and I collaboration. So, all right, I'm gonna let it dry. And we'll be back. All right, artists. Well, so I was just playing real quick with this idea and look at how cool that is. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. We're gonna try two different ways this is crumpling it up and smoothing it out. This is not crumpling it up. I want to see what kind of happens if we have a, a smoother surface here. Um, I have my alcohol ink blending solution. And the reason why I'm doing that is just so I have a little bit more, uh, it extends the dry time a little bit. And um, we're going to play with alcohol inks, alcohol inks. That color turns out really brown. Uh, ooh, here's a pinata orange, which comes in that basic set. It's a very rusty orange, so we'll try a little bit of that on each of these. We probably won't try too much of that. Here's the pinata yellow. And over here, we'll put some yellow over there. And we're not going to do any real mixing or painting with this. We're just going to try to let it be organic and see what happens. Now here's purple. We know that when we put purple in with yellow, it'll make kind of a brown. But alcohol ink doesn't mix like that unless you get it really clumpy. Um, I love that color. So this is uh, Tim Holtz uh, Wild Plum. So as you can see, with the crumpled paper uh, versus the non-crumpled, you definitely get a different look and reaction. Now one thing with alcohol inks, guys, is the more that you put on there, the darker your lines are going to get between each color. So um, try to be not sparing necessarily. But um, less is more sometimes with alcohol ink. This is, I think, uh, the clover, okay. And this definitely comes out of here differently, doesn't it? Now I'm out of a lot of my inks, uh, the smaller bottles. So I still have my larger bottles. This is, uh, I don't know, one of the blues. I'm not thinking too much about it other than knowing I don't want to, you know, mix the wrong colors, you know, but is there really a wrong mix with alcohol inks? Not necessarily, but what it is more of a, a wrong too much gives you those darker circles. I don't mind some of that darker circles. I just don't want a ton of it. I think that's really cool. Okay, um, let's go with this Coptic blue. Again, it, it doesn't matter what, yeah, see that's really similar to the last one. Any alcohol ink can work with the other one. You know, it doesn't have to be a certain brand. I like the pinata colors because I think they're affordable and they're very pretty. Um, let's 
try a little bit more of this green again. There's a little more yellow. And we're wanting to make enough of this that it will cover our two pages on our book. This is going to be our background. Hopefully. We'll see. Like I said, I haven't done this before, so I don't really know what's going to happen with it. And this is just really super cool. Now what I'm really curious about is like bringing in the metallics. That mixing those two colors is really beautiful. Two completely different looks from the process. This is straight alcohol. Let's see if we can't get anything interesting to happen here. Well, yes, yes we can Let's do it over here too. So when you do the straight alcohol, do it really lightly, and you'll kind of get these little speckledy um, little holes. If you don't like that look, don't do that look, okay? And I'm bringing some more of this guy. The great thing about alcohol ink is it does push those other colors around kind of disintegrates and moves them. It is really a fun medium. And I do like these dark uh, areas, you know, you just have to, the, the more ink you get on there, the more the ink pushes to the edges and the more you get that organic outline. It just depends on what you want from your piece. I think this piece is just about finished. I love that. I want to make sure that that's printed in there. I'm going to set this one to the side because I really like it just how it is. And this one I'm going to experiment with a little bit more. I'm going to just dab up a little bit of that spare ink there. Look at that pattern, texture. I mean, this is really gorgeous too. So let's play real quick and see. All right, guys, this is a pipette, and we've got our rich gold all shaken up. This is a pinata color. You can use whatever you have. Um, Ranger makes some really beautiful metallics, too. Hopefully that wasn't just way too much. It might have been just way too much, huh? This is how you get good at uh, uh, alcohol inks, though. You have to practice it and see what works and what doesn't work. Um, you know, we're going to try to loosen that up a little bit. We kind of took out all the rest of our color underneath of there, didn't we? How about if we do this? <laughs> wow.
just bring in a little bit more color over the top of it, seeing if we can't pull back, bring back a little bit of that color in there. Trying to see if I can get it to move a little bit more on here. That is really beautiful. Wow, beautiful. Um, I want to try one other thing here. So just a sec. I, this is white. And uh, I don't really know what's going to happen here when I do this. We're going to put some of this gold down on here. And what I expect to happen is that it'll move the colors. It might make everything really milky, obviously. But can we keep a delineation? That's the question. got a little bit um, too thick, obviously. I love it, but it got too thick. So, pull in a little bit more of our metallic. And then let's pull in some color again. All right, guys, I'm gonna let these dry. I don't wanna mess around with them too much more because I don't wanna make them muddy, you know? They're already a little bit muddy, but they're really pretty too. It's actually really gorgeous what's happening in here. 
I'm going to see if I can lighten up a little bit of that. Wow. How much fun is that? Uh, Kat Austin gave me the idea to uh, use the alcohol ink on uh, tin foil. So, aluminum foil. I hadn't really uh, looked up, at, you know, any ways of doing it. I just started playing. Playing. That's incredible. Okay, guys. Well, it's time to go down to the river. So we will chat soon. Bye. Okay. Well, I've just been kind of gathering some things here. Now, here are our pieces of alcohol ink on aluminum foil. And each one of them gave their own really unique appearance. Uh, this, you know, it got a little muddy in here, but what I, I actually really love the texture and the pattern. I think it's gorgeous. Hey, what are you doing with that? What are you doing in that corner? What are you doing? You gonna come see me? Nope, not gonna come see me. Got a tail. I got a tail. <laughs> oh, he's gonna come see me on this side. Is that what you're doing? babe. Oh, let's get you back in the camera. Hi. What you doing? What does it smell like? Hmm? I smell like the river too. We went swimming today. I went swimming today. Ozzy went swimming. Should we glue some pages down? Hmm. So we do some work. Let's see how that works out. Ah, oh, this is what you're doing here. You can't eat it. <laughs> No, it's icky water. Where are you going? You can stay. Oh, awesome. You're getting off balance on your little chest on my legs.
Where are you going? I thought you wanted to watch. I guess he's all done now. <laughs> I'm just putting uh, a little bit of base layer on the back of a tile. What? Yes. On the back of our 30 times 3, I am putting some ephemera on the back. Right, guys. Here we go. So these are the two heavy pages. They are the six glued. So we have our, our back base page, six, six, and four for the back base. All right. So we are going to, these are three inch squares. Now you don't have to have these little wooden doors. This is just another art project, right? So, um, I want to make my squares be two and a half inches wide on each side so that would give me a quarter inch on each one. A quarter inch mm, hole, uh, frame thingy. Yeah, that thing. So if I put that there and that to the top there, Okay, all right, how are we gonna figure this out? That one's pretty easy, right? Well, almost pretty easy. Let's get this ruler out. It's a little bit wider. almost a perfect fit. Okay, so we're gonna go with that. So I'm just gonna um, 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 draw this out real quick. Since this is on the inside, it's fine. It's gonna be fine no matter what, really. I don't think... All right, so that's perfect. So what we need to do is go in a quarter inch on each one. or like a, a millimeter there. Okay, so this should be six inches here. All right, so if our page is eight inches long, we go one inch in, one inch in. That would give us a half an inch in the center, which would be perfect when we go our quarter inch down, right? Yeah, it's just a touch under that full eight inches there. All right, so just right underneath this line of lettering, All right, that's at one inch, then we want to do it a quarter inch. So I'm going to go right there. So 
So from here to here has to be three inches and then a quarter inch. All right, through the lettering. All right at the top of the lettering. That was right underneath that lettering. Just use the print as a, you know, as your marker. And we're going to go another quarter inch in. So that one's right there. So they're using the same line there. So it's uh, right about there. Now, here's the question. If they're using the same line, that's not good. No, it's perfect. Okay. All right. So we're going to cut out this inner line. Let's make sure. I don't want to take it down that far. It's about it's right at the same. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out the inside of these. Right to here. And I should have my big cutter and a little exacto. Now you're going through a lot of pages. And we're going to take it all the way to the bottom. Okay. We got those finally cut out. Um, what I'm going to say, guys, is four would have been fine. Six was overkill. There was no reason for me to do that. I just wanted to make sure it was a really nice strong sturdy page and it is um but it probably doesn't need to be that sturdy <laughs> um <clears throat> so what are we gonna do now um the aluminum foil turned out very cool i did spray it with triple thick clear glaze um Definitely use something that's a gloss. I don't know if that's glossy enough, but it has a really nice shine to me. I like how it looks. And this is really interesting also. This is super cool. I, um, I find them rather fascinating. I think we're going to use this one.